But football officially being over until next fall, it's about time we start doing some new, fun, and exciting content that's not only interesting, but it's also easy to make. <laughs> Transfers are as common in college football as a coach dating a young university age co-ed. But before the advent of the NIL rule, there were a number of successful quarterbacks who started off at one school, but for one reason or another, went to a, a different university, turning around their whole careers and eventually turning it into NFL success. Now you may be asking, who are those quarterbacks? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about in today's video, and we'll explore the top nine quarterbacks in the NFL that have transferred in college. Before we get started, I'd like to thank all the supporters of the channel. I'm grateful for your time and attention, and I hope we can all grow together in this journey of trying to break through the YouTube algorithm. But enough of that chit chat, let's get right into the video. So the first guy on our list is Dolphins QB Jacoby Brissett. The former backup to Andrew Luck started off at Florida during the Will Muschamp era. He sat behind John Brantley, the man who took over for Tim Tebow, but come next season, Brissett was battling for the starting job against Jeff Driscoll, who honestly ended up winning the job and led the Gators to an 11-2 record, thus all but forcing Jacoby to pack his bags out of Gainesville. Brissett transferred to NC State where he didn't just resurrect his career from the dead, but he revived the entire Wolfpack program. After sitting out for one year due to transfer rules, he went on to have a solid career with the Wolfpack, throwing for over 2,000 yards and 20 plus touchdowns in both seasons he played. His stats and skill sets were enough to get him drafted in the third round of the 2016 NFL Draft by Bill Belichick's New England Patriots. So far, Brissett has carved out a solid career as a backup, having a few solid seasons in Indy as Andrew Luck's understudy. Not the best quarterback on this list, but he will certainly have a long career as a franchise's second option. Now this next guy you've all heard before, and you all know his story and his name, and that player is none other than Browns quarterback Baker Mayfield. We aren't going to spend too much time on Baker since his story is very well documented. But just for the people that don't know, he started off as a walk-on at Texas Tech under Cliff Kingsbury. And in only his freshman season, Mayfield impressed and actually won Big 12 Player of the Year. It was looking like the future of the Tech's program. But come next offseason, however, after having a dispute with the coaching staff, Baker went to Oklahoma and continued on the success he had in Lubbock and only led the Sooners to two straight college football playoff appearances. As we know, Baker ended up winning the Heisman in his final season in Norman and went on to become the number one overall draft pick of the Cleveland Browns. Although Mayfield hasn't been the savior for the franchise like they hoped he would have been, and now that the franchise decided to take a big leap of faith and sign Deshaun Watson, that leaves Baker essentially in a weird limbo situation. What team will Baker land on? Who knows? But right now, no team is interested in him. Landing in at the number seven spot is the man, the myth, the legend himself, Nick Foles. Big Dick Nick before left in the entire spirits of filthy Dolphia. He was an average college quarterback out of Arizona. However, he didn't start out playing for the Wildcats. Foles originally committed and played one year at Michigan State, where despite having never graduated from the university, then coach Mark D'Antonio concerned him one of his guys. During Foles' time with the Wildcats, he went 15-20 and 20 in 35 starts, but ultimately played well enough to get drafted in the third round of the 2012 NFL Draft by the Philadelphia Eagles. After having a Pro Bowl season in 2013, the Eagles ultimately ended up training Foles to the St. Louis Rams, where his career would ultimately flatline and pretty much be left on life support. Eventually, Foles found his way back to the city of he loved and was able to take the reins over from an injured Carson Wentz to lead the franchise to their first Super Bowl title ever. Now, there may be a bit of pushback from this next guy, because I understand the hatred behind the media pushing guys a bit too soon, but coming in at the number six spot is none other than Joe Burrow. Most of you guys probably already know his story already, just based on the fact that he was the biggest storylines in Super Bowl 52. But to give you a Spark Notes version of his rise to fame, Burrow started at Ohio State, of course, and after being buried on the bench behind JT Barrett and then losing the job to Dwayne Haskins, he decided to transfer to LSU. In his second season in Baton Rouge, Burrow led the Tigers to an undefeated season along with the National Championship. The 25-year-old quarterback won the Heisman Trophy and was drafted with the first overall pick by the Bengals in the 2020 NFL Draft. Burrow, of course, still has a lot more football left to play, and 
you know, the sky is the limit for this kid. And I believe if the football gods allow it, he could definitely become the best, most accomplished player on this list five years down the line. If you want to watch a more in-depth video on Burrow and his rise, check out the recent video I put out following the Super Bowl. All right, we are officially inside the top five of our list. This next guy can definitely fall lower on this list, but due to his electric ability as a player, he got the nod to be ranked this high. Who am I talking about? I'm speaking of Kyler Murray. Murray came into Texas A&M and only stayed one season after losing the starting job to Kyle Allen. Then Murray decided to enroll in the Lincoln Riley School of QB Rehabilitation and became a game changer for the Sooners once Mayfield got drafted. After the sim behind Baker for a season, Murray took over right where he left off and barely missed a beat. In his one full season in Norman, he threw for over 4,000 yards, rushed for 1,000, and accounted for over 50 touchdowns. His, number, his numbers and the weapons that he was equipped with were enough to win Murray the Heisman Trophy and earn the Sooners a berth in the college football playoff for the third time in four years. And what seems like a common theme on this list, Murray's transfer out of College Station proved to be one of the best decisions he ever made. It ended up landing him as the first overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft by the Arizona Cardinals. In his first season, Murray completely transformed the Cards offense and has become arguably the NFL's most exciting quarterbacks to watch. While we don't know if he'll stay in Arizona or not, just based on the information and the leaks that we've been hearing about his dissatisfaction with the Cardinals organization, we would kind of just have to wait and see how things play out. But personally, I could see him making an exit somewhere else. Do I know where he'll make that exit to? I have some ideas, but not anything that I'm you know, sold on yet. Joe Flacco, despite having a lackluster career void of even a quarter of the accomplishments of the other quarterbacks in the list, the Jersey-born pride was originally a backup quarterback at Pitt during his redshirt freshman year. Flacco ended up losing the starting job to Tyler Palco, who decided to transfer to FCS level Delaware, which some would see as a complete downgrade. His first season in Newark was nothing special, but in 2007, Flacco went off and threw for over 4,000 yards and 23 touchdowns and route to an FCS National Championship berth. The former Raven was one of the best quarterbacks coming into the 2008 NFL Draft and was selected with the 18th overall pick by Baltimore. And despite being very average and sometimes just terrible in the regular season, Flacco did win the franchise the Super Bowl and was named MVP for that game, which is why he lands in at fourth on our list. Coming in at number three is the Superman himself, Cam Newton. Cam's college career was one that was completely muddied in controversy. While attending Florida, Newton got suspended by the university for stealing a student's laptop and faced possible expulsion on three different occasions due to academic dishonesty. Newton then transferred to Blend Junior College where he made college coaches take notice of his talents yet again, being the only five-star coming out of a JUCO in 2009. Newton ended up committing to Auburn and went on to win the 2010 National Championship over Oregon. But just like his time in Florida, his time at Auburn was surrounded by rumors that he got paid and that his dad was asking for certain perks and bonuses. And, you know, it was just a whole wild situation that went on in his only season on campus. Since Newton made to the NFL as the Carolina Panthers' first overall pick back in 2011, Newton became arguably the league's most popular and electric player. He was the NFL MVP at one point and led Carolina to a Super Bowl. Although he is clearly at the tail end of his career, Newton's accomplishments and success at every level he's played at is why he's ranked so high. Now for the last two spots on this list, it came down to two quarterbacks who've both had tons of success in the league, but one of them was just way too good to pass up on for our number one spot. But the guy that finds himself at number two isn't so bad himself. Russell Wilson was not as a herald of a recruit coming out of high school as some of the other guys on this list were. Russell started his college career at NC State, where he's one of the ACC's top quarterbacks. And after graduating in just three years and going through spring training with the Colorado Rockies, Wilson decided to take his talents to a bigger program in the Big Ten and decided to commit with Wisconsin. This decision proved to be a great one as Wilson garnered a lot more spotlight playing for the historic program and led the Badgers to a Big Ten title and a berth in the Rose Bowl. The knock on Wilson coming in the 2012 NFL Draft was his lack of height. Because most GMs and scouts back during that time period thought, hey, you still need a drop back passer. Wilson was just simply not that type of quarterback. 
Despite all those concerns coming into the draft, Seahawks coach Pete Carroll saw enough to make Wilson the 75th overall pick. And Wilson's impact on the franchise was as immediate as any other quarterback's impact has ever been. During his time in Seattle, he led the Hawks during one of the most dominant eras in franchise history. Now that Wilson will be taking his talents to Mile High State, it'll be interesting to see if he can lead the Broncos back to Providence. Because we all know that Wilson has a lot of football left in him. Now for our number one guy whose transfer led to the most success in the NFL is former Fox, now ESPN broadcaster, Troy Aikman. The former Cowboys quarterback is getting the top knot here as his transfer led him to the most success as a pro quarterback. Aikman started off at Oklahoma under Barry Switzer and a system that didn't really fit his play style. After suffering an ankle injury against Miami that forced him to miss his entire sophomore season, losing his starting job in the process, Aikman decided to transfer to UCLA, which had a more pass-oriented style of offense, which fit Aikman's skill set. During his time in LA, the Hall of Famer won the Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Year Award and finished third in 1988's Heisman Trophy race. Aikman was the first overall pick in the 1989 NFL Draft by the Cowboys, and after a few bad seasons, Dallas was able to win three Lombardis during his time with the team and returned the Cowboys back into their rightful place as America's team. Even though I'm a Cowboys fan, I'm not a big fan of Aikman as a broadcaster. You really don't have to be a football historian to see why Aikman would be the number one guy on this list. Well, that's it for this video, guys. It's kind of interesting to see that a lot of these guys came before the advent of the transfer portal and the NIL rules implemented only a few years ago. It will be interesting to see who else will eventually land on this list. Maybe Caleb Williams or Spencer Rattler. We just gotta wait and see what the future holds. If you agree or disagree with my list, please comment down below in the comment section. Share your thoughts on whether this is the type of content I should do more of. But until next time, guys, peace.